state of emergency has been declared overnight in Turkey following a powerful earthquake. More than 50,000 people were killed in the worst natural disaster in modern Turkish history. The UN says more help is on its way and has urged governments not to hinder aid supplies. Our correspondent Anna Foster. We're held at very high readiness to go anywhere in the world within five days notice. Although when we first got the call we had people spread between, uh, between Cyprus, Malta and the UK and within, within five days we'd vectored in in the end from the UK and from Cyprus. Two groups of people managed to get into, in, into Turkey get up here to, uh, to Turkulu where we're based and set up and I think that's, uh, that's due to our training and the fact that we are absolutely ready to go. Uh, as I literally pulled up into the coach, I got escorted straight up into the Turkish Roll 1 uh, where there was a x-ray machine waiting for me. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't working, so uh, we had to pop back down and pick off my equipment, which I haven't even unpacked from the, the, the wagon which brought it from the airport, uh, straight up into the Roll 1 facility and start my job. I've been working 24 hours a day since I got here, uh, so I'm on call constantly. So uh, my territory kind of uh, expand, is, is expanding and only recent days, I think as of yesterday, they've moved to Radogfa to uh, the University Hospital, which I believe is 40 miles away from here. But prior to that, I think there was a 300k radius shortage of uh, radiographers. So I was uh, on my own, very busy for a while. Well, you've got to think that um, a lot of these people have lost everything, whether that's the houses they're living in, um, the social structures they have, they've lost relatives, they've lost you know, children, um, partners, you name it. And it's also completely upset the infrastructure as well. So in terms of how that impacts your mental health, you know, that's completely thrown off the norm. There's a lot of loss, grief. Um, there's also a lot of fear. We're still waiting to see if further earthquakes happening at the moment. We're still experiencing tremors. So there's stress and anxiety about that. And there's obviously the loss, the low mood there. So um, kind of heightened mental health atmosphere to what we'd normally have. There's always a risk of stress and burnout when you're working in a, um, a high readiness environment where there's a lot going on anyway. So that's already a risk in of itself. But also there's a risk of what we call secondary trauma. So where you're dealing with a lot of these, you know, horrible to hear situations. And they ask me the emotions of that and the, the thoughts and the feelings associated with that. So my job therefore is to be able to check in with our you know, medics, with our doctors, everybody who's out here to kind of offer them support, make sure that they're okay. If we need to consider the Stratovac protocol, then I can step in for that one. Um, but do my best to contain them here um, and keep them working because that's, that's going to be the best for them where possible. Okay, so we're here in Turgulu on the grounds of the um, on the grounds of the local hospital. Unfortunately, the hospital was damaged during the earthquake; it no longer operates. So we've worked. Um, we're working alongside the um, the Turkish emergency response, as well as our UK uh, UK Med, which is a an NGO associated with Foreign Commonwealth Office. The three organisations, military, UK Med, and the Turkish Roll One, are all working together in a joint international clinic to re to replace the uh, the outputs of that broken hospital. So we brought some primary health care, several, several units of primary health care, both from my own regiment, 16 Medreg, and also from the RAF. We've also brought ward capacity because with a, with a several hundred bed hospital right next to us, I can't admit patients. We need to have somewhere where we can put patients if they need to be, um, if they need to be looked after. As well as that, we've brought, uh, we've brought a surgical capability, emergency medicine, ITU department, um, and all of that together is, uh, is all that together represents a lot of uh, a lot of medical capability which again without us just wouldn't be here well i think it's a lot to take on board and certainly when you get onto the uh, on, onto the uh, the clinic with the uh, the turks and uk med there are a lot of people who really who really have very little left and i would say being able to give these people somewhere to go for their, for their medical treatment is a uh, is is a, a really positive experience and i think that's something that our, our medics will probably take away from this I mean, they've absolutely met what we'd expect of them and more. This has been a difficult place to come and a difficult place to work. 
but despite all those challenges, they've completely risen to the occasion. Um, so we've been pushing out into the more rural areas, into the villages, um, for people that haven't been able to get to see a doctor in the last, what, since the earthquake began. Um, so we've just been pushing out to try and reach as many people as possible. Literally, we got our module out, our 501 med module, put it in and started receiving patients. I'm pretty sure a tanai went out to the local village um, and then literally five minutes later, a woman showed up, needed needed help, and we got her in. We've been seeing a lot of um, respiratory um, conditions, I think, due to like the dust levels and stuff like that. Um, but we'd also been seeing a lot of people coming in for their like prescriptions. Um, and obviously, we can't provide everything, but like top off for of pain relief and maybe like um, inhalers and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good. It's good to be able to help. The RAF have sent out our Row 1, um, our Row 1 treatment facility. So we've got a combination of doctors and nurses, paramedics and medics out here. We're all sleeping behind us in the field um, and we're working both down there but also up here um, with, with people like Wizam in the medical treatment facility. Honestly, like uh, when I'm dealing with, med with patients, what we're doing actually we're trying to get what they like, get the complaints as rapidly as possible because we know there's a lot of patients waiting normally in a hospital polyclinic so we're trying to get as much patient process as possible but what I'm getting for her, which is like she taught me, taught me how to be patient honestly like she's she's very meticulous in her job she's very detail oriented so it's been a great experience for me to see how different people approach the same problem like she said obviously like there's a lot of patients who have been affected directly and indirectly by the, by the disaster some people have uh, like issues related to like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and other uh, issues that are let's say uh, affected like they get their lives are affected directly or indirectly by, by the uh, earthquake so definitely I feel like uh, yeah I'm getting a lot of different points of view from different people yeah mostly mostly from Dr. K she's been very patient she's been very um, yeah she's she's very nurturing and very uh, like overall she it's been a great experience oh it's made all the difference in the world first of all from being able to understand what's going on to be able to interpret um, cultural ways of expressing things cultural terminology um, so we've learned to take que to do questioning together then we often examine together so um, and then we'll we'll discuss our findings and work out a diagnosis and then we have to go and negotiate with pharmacy um, as to what what drugs they may have and what medications most of which are known to me but there's some that are very specific some very specific to turkey and again wizan can help me there um, so we've we've developed we're developing a very good working relationship both with each other but also with the other turkish people around here and in the pharmacy um, and what wizan was talking about is quite right we are having a great pressure of patients there are large numbers coming here so there is pressure on us to get through people um, and to see people as quickly and in a timely manner um, but also as you were saying giving each person the the time and the respect and the dignity and the examination that they require it's been incredibly positive actually um, it's been an absolute uh, an absolute revelation to work with uh, with with UK med who have a fantastic organization they've welcomed us with open arms and uh, and also the Turkish really really welcoming We've, uh, we've managed over the last seven days to see, as a, as a group, over two and a half thousand patients. And these are people who, without our care, would have had nowhere to go. I found the population have been so open um, and positive and, and just so welcoming and appreciative of this care. Um, in this environment, I'm the only mental health link out here. So actually, you know, to get that support even so quickly and so easily, I found has been really appreciated. A lot of gratitude has come my way just been welcomed so much into the village into the town like it's just lovely to be able to work alongside them as well it's just great yeah exactly this is what you join the army to do i joined to do humanitarian aid and that's exactly what i'm doing so uh, it's been a great experience and i'm looking forward to learn more from dr kate and the others actually it's been amazing i think the reward speaks for itself you can see you'll see it on the faces of the people walking by you can see it on the patients you're treating that everyone is really grateful and for me, that's enough. Like knowing I've helped, and I, if I was in the other shoe, if the foot was in the other shoe, I would 100% expect somebody else to be there for me. And in this case, we are there for them, and I, that's all I'm going to take away from it. Not all. That's everything I'm taking away. It's just human, uh, humanity is is still beautiful. <laughs>